This tiny little camera here is the brand new Osmo Action 4. It's equipped with a stunning 1 over 1.3 in sensor, super wide 155 degrees field of view, 4K 120 frames per second, and a lot of other things that are packed inside. However, the real question is obviously, is it actually any good when you put it to the test in real life situation? And could this be a game changer in the realm of action cameras? So if we start with the build quality and take a look at what the camera looks like, then you can see that they've kept the robust design of the previous model this camera can take a whole lot of beating the frost resistance is also really good in minus 20 degrees which is really cold you can film up to 150 minutes i actually put this camera in the freezer and left it there recording for a long time and it was still recording when i took it out a long time later as you can see it's currently frozen but it is still recording so for obvious reasons, the camera is super cold to touch. It's been taking a cold plunge and it's been filming now for over 114 minutes and it still has over 11% battery left. And uh, you can open up here and there you have the battery as well as you can put a micro SD card as well. Then on the other side, if you take it up here, here you have a USB-C connection. This camera is also waterproof down to 18 meters, just like this, which is nice. Another thing you will see on this camera is that it has two screens, one back and one front, and both of them are touch screens. Now, I'm gonna be totally honest with you, I never really fully realized why you would need a like, touch screen on the front as well, until I understood that it's actually pretty nice when you're vlogging. You can uh, touch it here and change these settings while I'm, you know, uh, having the camera facing myself. Now, one thing I've appreciated the whole lot with the Osmo, both in the past and with this one, that they have this quick release magnetic system. So it looks like this. And when you have it in the case, it just makes it really easy to switch from horizontal mode here to vertical mode with, no, it's so fast. You just do it like this, boom. And now you have it in uh, horizontal mode. This system also makes it easy to switch between different mounts. I've had it on the handlebar mount and I want to switch it back to the chest mount. Just click on it and put back on. Just make sure that it's really stuck by wiggling a little bit in. You hear two clicks and it's not going anywhere. Like and subscribe. All in all, I'm very impressed by the build quality of this camera. It's incredibly robust. The previous model, my friend Peter Lindgren put on fire and it was still working. He drove over everything and this one is just better if anything. Now let's now move on to the specs and we can start with the heart of the, this camera, the brand new 1 over 1.3 inch sensor. This is what makes this camera a good low light performer and the dynamic range, it's a lot better than from the previous model. We'll dive deeper into the image quality in a second, but I put it to the test in many different lighting conditions that are pretty tough, and in my opinion, it has handled them quite well. Another thing the Osmo Action 4 offers is a super wide 155 degree field of view. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I do think this is the widest field of view any action camera that's currently on the market offers. And in my opinion, and for me, this has been really nice because I do a whole lot of these, uh, you know, POV style of videos where I have the camera strapped on here and it's showing my hands. And the wider the field of view is, the more enjoyable it is to watch the video. For instance, having this field of view when running around taking photos versus this, it's you can just see more and it just becomes uh, nicer to watch, at least in my opinion. Now you can also film 4K 120 frames per second, which is really nice. All of us that like some, I mean, who doesn't like a little bit of that slow motion? But I've been having a lot of fun getting these slow motion shots. And if you're really into a lot of action sports, it's nice to see them flips and everything in slow motion. Plus you can do that on all of the different field of views. And you can of course change between a few different, you know, field of views from ultra wide to wide and then a linear which is like not warped at all. Now in my opinion, one place I think DJI has done a good job, that's when it comes to the stabilization of their action camera. It's really good and every year my mind keeps getting blown by how stable they're able to get their footage. I mean, you're running around and it's still stable. Now I do have a few different stabilization modes to choose from. Personally, I mostly use the Rocksteady and Rocksteady Plus. But you can also choose like horizontal balancing, which keeps the horizontal like really balanced. And if you go down to full HD, you can choose horizontal like 360 balance, which basically keeps the horizon totally balanced, no matter how you turn the camera. Now for all of us that like to color grade our footage, this camera is equipped with D-Log, which is basically a flat picture profile. I like that a whole lot. And it's also 10-bit footage, which is something that I appreciate a whole lot. Now, as I said before, I did test this camera out in a few different lighting scenarios, and I was really interested in seeing like difficult lighting scenarios, high contrast, low light scenes, and all that uh, stuff that cameras have sometimes hard time handling. 
and I was uh, I was quite impressed and pretty happy with the results. And in my opinion, it did a pretty decent job and a huge upgrade from previous models. Now, as you can see with this footage right here, it's not only super stable, <laughs> but it's also handling the shadows really good. And once we go in like a direct sunlight area, it quickly exposes for the sky, making the sky really visible, it's not blown out, but also all the hard shadows that you see all around us, they're also visible with minimum noise. And when I took it indoor in like the store, where it's like has horrible fluorescent lighting everywhere, the color accuracy is something that I'm actually quite impressed by. And all in all, the color accuracy of this camera, even in low light scenarios, it's something that I'm also really impressed by. Very good job there, DJI. All right, so it's currently really dark outside and I'm not totally sure what to expect of this camera, but uh, I'm gonna ride my skateboard here and uh, put it to the test. Now, considering the size of this camera, like how, you know, small it is, then I'm actually quite pleased with the outcome of this low light footage. I mean, it's just getting pretty wild what cameras can do nowadays. Now what I found worked for me to get the best quality footage is that in the settings I changed a little bit up here. I of course made sure to have this low light image enhancement on and then in the adjustments, this is something new in this camera, that you can now manually change the sharpness and the noise reduction. And I had the sharpness to medium and the noise reduction to high. And then I also made sure to expose manually and not let the camera run the ISO up to like a lot. And that produced uh, pretty decent low light footage. Good job again, DJI. Now, I do have to be honest with you, I'm not much of a mountain biker or anything, but I did want to try it out while uh, cycling. Do you say uh, cycling when I'm on my bike, you know? <laughs> this is how I'm on my bike. But I did mount it on the handlebar mount and took the bike out for a spin. And uh, you can judge by yourself what you think of the footage and by the way please share your own thoughts in the comments down below what you think of this camera and all of the footage that i've been throwing up and one more thing i just want to say a huge thank you to dji for sponsoring this video it really helps me keeping this uh, videos coming you know now when it comes to ease of use like how simple it is to use the camera in my books i will give it five out of five it's only like two buttons to choose from and the touch screen and everything like operating it very simple so if you've never touched the camera before, you'll be able to use this really quickly. Now, how much will this camera then cost? And is this the perfect action camera for you? Well, at the time of the recording, this camera comes in at $399, which I think is a really fair price to what is packed inside. And if we ask, you know, the question, is this the perfect action camera for you? Well, I've laid out everything that it has to offer. Ultimately, you will have to do this like decision on your own. I know it's really nice to get that ginger viking uh, to tell you uh, exactly what you should do in my mind i've enjoyed the whole lot i was really happy when dji contacted me and like stoked to try the camera and you guys know that i do very few sponsored videos i only do it to products that i actually like so if you're looking for an actual camera that has a big sensor good low light performance really stable and a wide field of view as well as a lot of other things like 4k 120 frames a second and all of the other things that we've talked about then the osmo action 4 is definitely a camera to consider now, if you happen to be looking for a drone that's small size and doesn't really break your bank then next you should watch this video right here